So, maybe you can still see it. My knuckles are still a little bit red from the practice, although it was light. Um, ah, which one would I sit upon? This is the Dita Joe I'm using currently. This is a commercial brand. And it at least smells like the stuff that my Sifu used to dish out. But you already saw that it is in a plastic bottle. What you do here is you pour a little bit of it in your hand, rub it till the hand gets warm, and rub it especially on the areas that you hit and condition it. Massage it a little bit, give some love to your hands, don't overdo it, rub it until it really gets hot, the rubbing itself has a good effect, and rub it in, you don't need much. But, uh, like I said, this is a plastic bottle and I don't know what kind of s ugly stuff the alcohol may dissolve out of the plastic, even if they say it is PP and it shouldn't happen. Second of all, although I do trust the source of this Dita Jow, it is in the end, uh, I don't, don't really know what's in there. And the other problem with it is, this is a, uh, what? Maybe four ounces or whatever, I'm not so familiar with the imperial measurements. What does it say? 50 milliliters. So, go figure and uh, look it up in the internet. And this cost me 25 bucks without shipping. Now, uh, that is a proud price. And uh, I would very much prefer to make my own Joe because for the price I paid for this, I get all the ingredients for a jar recipe. And uh, mixing that and letting it properly age all by myself comes me much cheaper and I have even better control over what's in there. Because uh, where I live in Austria slash Germany, which is just five minutes away by car, they have very strict quality controls for all the pharmacies. So if I order my stuff in a pharmacy instead of online, I know exactly that I get the quality I want. I also know that I don't get in legal trouble with any of the ingredients because they only sell you what is legal. And you wouldn't believe some of the things that go into some jewelry sites. There is a Southern Praying Mantis Dita jewelry site that actually requires opium. I forgot who the master was, but an old uh, praying mantis master, southern praying mantis master, who moved to Los Angeles because he fled from the communists. His biggest complaint was he, that he couldn't get opium in the US to mix his favorite Dita Joe formula. Others use snake venom and yet others use uh, mercury oxide, also known as uh, cinnabar. So there is interesting stuff. And uh, if you get it prescription free, it is usually also undangerous. Still, if one wants to do this, one should ask a doctor, a pharmacist and a herbalist in that order of appearance and do good research. The recipe I will show and the mixing I will show is something that works good for my experience. It is not a medical recommendation because it would be illegal to do that. Please read the disclaimer. Uh, but it is a description of my own experience and it is for information purposes only. So without further ado, enjoy watching me making my job. Uh, by the way, the ingredients are all easily obtainable where I live and should be easily obtainable everywhere in the Western world and probably the Eastern world. I use the English names for the flowers. The recipe is down in, uh, in the description box, uh, plus the link where I originally found it. So if you wish to experiment on yourself, good luck, but that would be your decision. I take no liability whatsoever for uh, any harm that may come from use or misuse of that information. I have written that in the disclaimer, but uh, to be legally on the safe side when showing something like Dita Jao in my country, I'd rather say it twice and be safe than sorry. Now, without further ado, Dita Jao. So, this is me going through the making of the Dita Jao process. Uh, I have all the ingredients here. They recite calls in alphabetical order for uh, each one tablespoon. 
uh, angelica root, angelica blossoms, calendula flowers, cloves powder, comfrey leaves, dandelion root, fennel seeds, frankincense powder, horsetail mule powder, nettle leaf, plantain leaves, and turmeric powder. And I got all the ingredients except for the plantain leaves. And I will replace the plantain leaves with lavender that I got from my own garden. It has pretty much similar properties of being antiseptic and uh, anti-inflammatory. And there is more cooling in the traditional Chinese medicine sense. So, usually I would put it just in an alphabetical order. However, the problem is that uh, my frankincense doesn't came, didn't come in powders, but actually in crystals. So I first have to put them in and grind them down to a fine powder. So this has So there you have it, a tablespoon for. Let us see if that... Yeah, see, that is roughly a tablespoon. So this stuff doesn't grow bad quickly, so I'll seal it again. So now, you, you are working with pesto and water. Grind your frankincense until you get really finely ground powder. I don't think that you need me. See me watching, but this is why I do this first. Because if that isn't powdered, it won't do you much good. See you after I finish the grinding. Oh, by the way, maybe it is useful if you see me mortaring. Because some people will go like this. Boing, boing, boing. And this will basically spread the whole thing Completely all over your kitchen or in a preparation place. So, put it down, maybe use your body weight and only make motions like this. Use your body weight to get it done. Maybe go in circles, put it together. Grinding this kind of stuff takes patience and some getting practice too. So maybe if this is your first barbecue, uh, you want to get some extra frankincense so you get the practice and maybe you don't want to uh, do it in the first place in a place where if you make a mess it uh, where a mess won't matter also don't do it at a windy place but like I said the right technique when using pestle and mortar needs some getting used to so alchemy is a difficult practice so sooner or later you arrive at a point uh, where just doesn't grind any finer, which is when you put it in your collector. Cleaning the pesto with the hands uh, is no big deal because the whole stuff is going. Now we can go through it, but after the powdering process you should wash your hands basically because otherwise it's such a mess to touch stuff. And as you can see, I'm rather generous with my definition of a tablespoon. After all, I want some. It is general purpose Joe, but it is strong Joe.
And if this stuff works really well, we can do more. So, I always work from right to left, in other words, the other way in which I was right. So the to-be-used stuff is on my right side, the finished stuff is on my left side. Also, grinding the uh, already dry flowers is good because that still opens them up a little bit more. Gives you a better active surface. And besides, the worst thing that could happen if you grind it down properly is yeah that is still very fine So this obviously leaves me enough for at least one other preparation, which is kind of nice, because uh, according to my promise, they will remain good and useful until at least 2015. And on uh, angelica root, which comes in grain, we must use the best really careful. And this is some kind of dry wood, so there is not much grinding going on there. Just a little bit pressing to activate it a little bit and let it go open. There won't be much grinding with a pestle, you would have to use a commercial grinder, electrical grinder, coffee grinder or something. But uh, I don't want to use our coffee grinder. And the old coffee grinder I had from my mother is Gone. Now we get clove powder, which is just an ordinary spice that I simply got from spice. Ah, the smell. The really regrettable thing is that you are not here, dear viewer, to smell what I smell. This is ah. This stuff smells so good, it's unbelievable. Mm. Not to waste anything. Strong stuff and already comes finely powdered. If you handle fine powder, you should always do that on a piece of paper that you can just fold over. So as You will see what I mean in a minute. So, this is always a good idea to do it over fold, fold double paper when you are handling. So, the next powders. The next thing is calendula flour. Again, one tablespoon.
So, this stuff is not very dense. Maybe I'll grind it a little bit and put in a little bit more. I mean, the very fact that this is not in ounces or in grams or in milligrams already shows you that this is a very robust for purpose. Recycle. And now the calendula flour. It doesn't grind very well. And I take it upon myself to do in a little bit more. Because this is really fluffy stuff and I do not want my dough to be too anemic and suffering from lagging ingredients. Like I said, this is a robust recipe anyway. So, I choose it to demonstrate here specifically because the ingredients are easily obtained and because it is not very sensitive to exact measurements. So, dandelion root next. Again, if I can get around to do that. Okay, this is what the dandelion root looks like. I'm not sure if this grinds very well, but let's give it a try. If nothing else, it is a little bit activated by the grinding process. Which is good for the first 24 hours of dissolving in the alcohol. Ah, like I thought, this is tough stuff. I would have to grind this in the coffee grinder. Now, fennel seeds. Uh, for those of you who hoped to see some banging, or more banging of the wooden gun, I must disappoint you. This will come in due time. Maybe these seeds will grind, maybe they won't. Uh, but this is uh, really for those people who are interested in knowing or who want to do some research into how Dita Zhao is made. By the way, some pronounce it Dita Zhou and others pronounce it Dita Zhao. Ah, the smell. You always want to free a little bit of smell, then you know it has at least been activated. You must know when to call it a day. Horse tail. Good for the bones. So, yes, this gel can also be used. Ah, oh, yeah, that is a very generous amount and just right. Uh, what can I say? This is really enough to get me at least one other preparation, maybe two. Yeah, the horsetail is too soft to grind well. But I guess the horsetail doesn't have a too strong smell. And also, of course, the cloves are almost stronger than anything else. But nonetheless, the mixture begins to develop this distinct smell of herbs. Ah. Nettle leaves. which have lots of healing properties. I don't know, for some reason I did use two spoons of them as well. starts to offer the scent, so that's 
pretty much it. See the wisdom of doing this all on paper. And now the last ingredient before we put in the alcohol is turmeric powder. By the way, did you remember that I told you that this little 50 milliliter bottle of Diva gel cost me, without shipping, 25 bucks out of Europe, that is? Well, the point is, this is already powdered. The point is, all this together didn't cost me 25 bucks. All this together, including the alcohol, cost me 15 bucks, and 10 bucks was the alcohol. So the whole herbs together were roughly 5 euros, or maybe 6. And uh, why is that relevant? Because it comes, like I said, where I live, the law. Now you mix that thoroughly. The law concerning quality control. In pharmacies, it's very, very strict. So if you buy it in a real official pharmacy, you have a very reliable source for highest quality. And although pharmacies are reputed to be expensive, the ingredients for half a liter of Ditajo cost me less than 50 milliliters that I bought online. And here I know exactly what went into it. So go figure. Now, of course, I have a great problem how to get that into this. Let's see if I can do that with a funnel or if that makes problems. No problem, it can be done. Maybe not as quickly as I would like, but then again, Kung Fu is about slow progress. Ah, works like a charm. Works like a charm. No big deal. And since there are always some losses, Okay, that I always use general amounts of stuff. So you see, this is still most of it is in there. So it pays that if you prepare half a liter or four half a liter of alcohol to have at least three quarter liter. So if you have 500 milliliters of alcohol having at least a bottle for 750 milliliters. I choose a wine bottle because that has only food grade residue in it, which I can live with, and uh, which has 750 milliliters, and which being green is also colored, because you should protect this from light as good as possible. And, yeah. For those in the know, yes, I do have a new iPhone, and my daughter discovered that I am now reachable on WhatsApp. 
Oh, and we get some money. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say this. Written in the script. So, we do not want to pour the alcohol in the metal spoon. It should theoretically not do any harm, but uh, I just don't. Don't forget, if you now pour the alcohol, to set some alcohol aside to also clean out Bowl, the computer and the mortar. This is 90% drinking alcohol without the stuff that makes it bitter so you could make booze out of this if you wish. You can easily also use it to make the funnel. This is half a liter. So this gives you an idea how the jar will look like, only the color will be stronger after it has been properly aged. So use some, and you get the alcohol residue out of this very easy. You just put it in the sun, the alcohol will evaporate quickly. I mean, what is still in there? Uh, and before you ask, this mortar is made out of granite, but ceramic is fine. Glass, if you have a robust glass one, is also fine. I prefer the granite. You shouldn't use ones of metal. Avoid metal if you anyway can avoid it. Whenever you think you got it all, you find out that you are still missing an ingredient. It shows because inevitably there is going to be a little mess, not just a little mess. And now my recite paper has got proper character. You see, now it's stained and therefore has proper character. So here is my detail job, I can eat it. And now we are going to stir it and shake it, shake it and stir it.
Don't forget to label it the date 26 of June 2014. All purpose job. Shake it properly and now put it in a dark and cold place. I put it in the refrigerator. And don't forget to turn it round and stir it at least once a day. Better would be twice. And make sure that all your relatives know what it is and know not to touch it. Now let it rest for at least, at least, at the very least, for three weeks. Better is six weeks, then it is remotely ready to use. Good jobs age at least for six months. Some jobs age up to five years or even older. And there's long age jobs are highly sought after. I have provided some links in the description box as to what they offer, uh, as to the science behind them. Because although I lamented that there is little science behind the data, which is true, there isn't no science. So that was it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.